Okay, I'm doing Caprica, you happy now? Ever since I did my original Battlestar Galactica retrospectives, my offhand dismissal of Caprica has led to a long campaign by several determined commenters to get me to watch this show. And since I was doing a lore evolution on the Cylons, I thought I might as well check it out and see what all the hype was about. First of all though, a shameless plug. If you like what I do on this channel and want to help it grow, consider joining my patrons or YouTube members. You get to see videos up to a week early, get access to exclusive behind the scenes content and many other benefits. Links and buttons down below. Now the shameless self promotion is out of the way, let's get stuck in. Following the immense success of the reimagined Battlestar Galactica, it was clear there was still an appetite for more stories in this universe. People kind of forget this today, but Battlestar Galactica was a pop culture phenomenon when it was airing. It developed a passionate fanbase which exists to this day, received critical acclaim, and was even talked about at the Pentagon and the United Nations. But with its story wrapped up by the end, what other shows could be spun off from such a successful series? The choice seems obvious, right? Do a prequel show set during the first Cylon War, and have it follow a young William Adama. Clearly that's what fans would be craving, right? Certainly a nice idea, but no. It was in fact Ronald D. Moore who didn't want to do that show. He explained, you don't try to repeat the formula. Everything about Caprica was designed specifically not to do what we had done in Galactica. Moore also sought to create a show which was more accessible to new fans, and have greater appeal to a female audience as well as a male audience. While Ronald D. Moore and David Icke were mulling over ideas for a spin-off, writer Remy Obacon, Obachon? That's one of those names that I just can't get right, isn't it? Known at the time for his work on 24, and who would later work on Stargate Universe and Falling Skies, pitched a movie to Universal Pictures about artificial intelligence. While Universal didn't pick up his movie, they asked him to bring his ideas to Moore and Ike. Thus, the idea for Caprica was born. However, before Caprica wrapped up its first season in 2010, the show was cancelled due to low ratings, and I get why. I do understand and even commend what Ronald D. Moore was intending by not doing another Space War series. The guy had worked on DS9 for several years and then spent another huge chunk of his career doing BSG, so I don't blame him for wanting to do something different and try to appeal to a wider audience. Which is why it's odd that Caprica was sold so heavily on its connection to Battlestar Galactica, actively courting the fans of a military sci-fi show only to present them with a family-slash-corporate drama is pretty odd. More even compared Caprica to soap operas like Dallas or Dynasty, again an odd thing to give to BSG fans. Ultimately, Caprica should probably have been its own original thing rather than a prequel, because taken on its own, it's actually not bad. While I do think Caprica is a very odd direction for a spin-off in terms of genre, I think it overall makes sense in terms of theme. A big part of Battlestar Galactica is the ancient mythology influence, and while Galactica draws from the epic quests of that mythology like the Odyssey or Jason and the Argonauts, Caprica instead is more like the sci-fi version of a Greek tragedy, the whole two households both alike in dignity thing. Yes, I know that's a Shakespeare quote, but he was drawing from Greek tragedies too. And Caprica is primarily focused on two families families, the Adamas and the Greystones, one dealing with crime and the underworld, while the other walks in the elite high society, and both are tapping into some super powerful technological breakthroughs, verging on that Prometheus stealing fire from the gods type thing. So there is a lot of connective tissue between Caprica and Galactica, but I see why a lot of BSG fans weren't exactly keen on this spin-off show. The later Blood and Chrome and those short webisodes from Razor have given us glimpses as to how good a prequel during the first Cylon War could be. It's something I still would certainly love to see. While I don't think Caprica is a bad show, I do think there were some odd creative choices. What's generally really well done is the world building. This isn't just our our world with the serial number filed off. There's genuine effort gone into making this world and its society feel authentic and lived in. The different cultures of the Twelve Colonies and the prejudices between them are intelligently written and well thought out. The show isn't just conjuring up some shallow racial allegories to appear deep and transgressive. It actually has the stones to go through with it. The Torons, their traditions, language and history, feels like a culture which could really exist. I especially like the use of ancient Greek and the Greek funeral tradition of offering coins to the boatman, but reinterpreted for a more modern setting. It's overall a very well-executed aspect of the show. What I do think is a little weird, however, is the choice to retain the faux documentary visual style from Galactica. Paul Greengrass-style handheld camera makes sense for a gritty military drama, but for a show which often takes place in ordinary houses and boardrooms, it's a bit odd. 
especially when the show randomly mixes in smooth dolly or steadicam moves. It feels like the visual style doesn't quite come together overall. The VFX are also a bit of a mixed bag. The cityscapes look nice and the Cylon prototypes are usually pretty strong, but I think the show was perhaps a little over ambitious with some of the shots. Entirely visual environments are a very difficult thing to make convincing even to this day. Even Blood and Chrome two years later struggled with this, trying to hide its CG sets with a gluttony of lens flares. It's only recently with shows like The Mandalorian, filmmakers have been able to create truly seamless digital sets on a TV budget. In Caprica, it's never very convincing. It works when the characters are in a virtual reality, of course, but when we're looking at something which is meant to be in the real world, it's not nearly as successful. The cast is very strong, with a lot of talented actors giving generally great performances. Eric Stoltz and Esai Morales give easily the best performances and were my favourite characters by far. Daniel Greystone is an interesting figure in the story, one which is actually quite unlikable in a lot of ways. Not inherently evil or anything, but someone so driven and emotionally damaged, he often ends up committing reprehensible acts. Daniel and Amanda Greystone, to make another Shakespeare comparison, certainly have a whiff of the Macbeths about them. A duo who think very highly of themselves and desire a lot of power, but often come into conflict with each other when dealing with the consequences of their actions. The two cast members who weren't quite as strong were Alessandra Torasani and Genevieve Buckner, as Zoe Greystone and Tamara Adama. Not that they're bad actresses or anything, in fact quite the opposite. However, their roles were extremely demanding, which asked the characters and actors to jump to points in their arc rather than gradually develop. I'll elaborate on exactly what I mean later when talking about the plot. Outside of the leads, Sasha Royce was awesome as Sam Adama, a sometimes brutal and merciless character, but one who sticks to a hard moral code. He's taken to some truly interesting places in the show and was always an interesting part of every episode. The supporting cast in general was very strong, with frankly too many good ones to name. It was also cool to see Pat Oswald pop up in the show. He's always a welcome face as far as I'm concerned. With regards to the story and plotting, I think Caprica could have benefited from having a shorter first season. After all, Galactica only had a 14 episode first season, and there's definitely some fat which could have been trimmed from Caprica. I always felt like the storytelling was a bit stop and start. Characters will come to natural conclusions for their arcs and then essentially restart them again. Character motivations often shift quite quickly and aren't always given enough focus to really understand. The show kicks off following a suicide bombing on a train which kills Zoe Greystone, as well as Tamara Adama and her mother. But via some techno mumbo jumbo, digital copies of Zoe and Tamara continue on in a virtual reality and in the body of a Cylon. There's lots of secrets which get exposed and allegiances shift, a lot seems to be happening, but certain plot lines seem to be stuck in place for several episodes, which is a little frustrating. Lacey, for example, Zoe's friend, ingratiating herself with the STO terrorist cell in order to get Zoe off Caprica, doesn't actually make any progress until the 10th episode, over halfway through the season. Speaking of Lacey, the internal power struggle of the SEO could probably have been cut entirely. James Marsters is usually pretty good, but he was honestly real bad in this show. He never came across as threatening in the role of Barnabas, and Lacey just ended up going to the STO camp anyway, so it all felt like a bit of a waste. Joseph Adama finally starts to heal following the loss of his wife and daughter, only for him to learn she may exist in Virtual, a version of her which he was previously horrified by, but then she's the one to get rid of him, even though she asked her friend to go find her father in the first place, and... Yeah, this could have been way more streamlined. There's also the roller coaster of Greystone Industries stock price. First, it's plummeting, so the Greystones have to do some PR and things start to get better, but then it goes down again and a rival ousts Greystone as CEO, only for Greystone to be voted back in two episodes later. Look, I get there needs to be obstacles for our characters to generate conflict for the story, but a lot of these developments come across as filler. When they could be cut out entirely without ultimately affecting the ending, it's not a good sign. It feels like the story is taking far too long to get to the point. The cluttered nature of these stories also hurts certain character arcs. I previously referred to Zoe and Tamara being a bit inconsistent. That's because the show often skips over crucial development for them. They disappear for whole episodes at times, and then by the time we see them again, they've gone through huge changes we didn't get to see. It makes following their stories quite difficult at times. Another thing I found frankly unforgivable was the whole William Adama death fakeout. It turns out, this kid was not William Adama in BSG, it was this other random kid we never saw or heard of the entire time. 
This made me roll my eyes hard. Just a cheap ploy to make the audience go, wait a minute, he can't die, he's in BSG. Only for the show to be like, haha, fooled you, what a twist. Except it's not really a twist if you only reveal that this was at all a possibility right at the very end. Honestly, this actually damages one of the strongest parts of the show. In Battlestar Galactica, we often heard from Adama that he didn't get along well with his father much. And in Caprica, we got to see his father's side of things. We got to see why this relationship was so tragic. Only for none of that to matter because it's not even the same kid. I heard there was a writer's strike during production of Caprica, and this is probably a result of that. Just a very silly idea. There's also elements in the show which aren't bad per se, but I don't personally like. I mentioned in my lore evolution on the Cylons, I would be touching on what we learn about them from this show. Now, of course, we're only seeing one piece of what was meant to be a larger puzzle, but I think the Cylons getting their monotheistic beliefs from a human religion is a bit lame. I found the concept of a machine race believing in a god really fascinating in BSG, and the idea that they may have developed this belief on their own made it all the more intriguing. I know that's not ever confirmed in BSG, SG, but to me at least, the Cylons developing their own religion is a lot more interesting than simply co-opting one which already existed. I'm also not sure if Caprica was meant to be suggesting the Cylons gain sentience by being inhabited by human minds, because if so, again, that's a bit lame. Although I'm unsure if that was what they were going for because we never got to see how this story arc played out in full. Overall, the story Caprica told in its first season was pretty strong. There are a lot of great characters, lots of interesting factions, and a terrific final episode. The STO trying to create a virtual heaven and staging a terrorist attack, which is ultimately foiled by the Cylons, was really good stuff. But what let it down was the plotting. It's just quite messy, with lots of threads which could have been cut without damaging the overall story. 14 episodes rather than 19, and I think this would have been a great first season. So, Caprica, was it good? I can see why a lot of BSG fans would be disappointed with this show, and I highly doubt I'd ever have watched it if people didn't constantly ask me to do a video on it. I can see why people would cite the failure of this show as the reason we never got a first Cylon War prequel. Taken as its own thing though, it's decent. I can also see why the show has developed a bit of a cult following. There are plenty of Battlestar Galactica easter eggs, but it has enough of its own unique ideas to be a solid show in and of itself. The virtual reality cyberpunk elements were the part of the show I enjoyed the most. I'm always a sucker for those types of things. And the drama, while convoluted in the grand scheme of things, was really compelling in the moment. The cast do a fantastic job and I really liked a lot of the characters. I can see how Caprica could have evolved into something really cool. Unfortunately, that'll never happen, and so as it stands, Caprica is a curious little novelty which ultimately, I am glad I watched. Anubis asks, are there any characters you hated from minute one? I don't know if hate is the right word, but I've never liked Lee Adama in Battlestar Galactica. From his first scene, I found him whiny and stupid. At least with Starbuck, she's an amazing pilot. Sure, she was irritating sometimes, but people called her on her shit, and at least she could put her money where her mouth was. But Lee seemed to flip-flop on his motivations, and of course, the dude lost the bloody Pegasus. The one time he was great was during Baltar's trial, but aside from that, I never liked Lee. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on my new uploads. If you want to help the channel grow, join my patrons or my YouTube members, where you can see videos early as well as some other exclusive content. Speaking of which, I'd like to quickly thank all of my patrons and members who are now appearing on screen. Have a good one, and as always, live long and prosper.